I am sad. These are your hard facts. Back of confirmed COVID cases over the weekend. 17 of those were in Lagos. Uh, it was really low, uh, but I still continue to see that for day. Glasscon was off. Oh my God. We had a great time yesterday at the glass ceiling convention. Women, oh yay! Oh yay! <laughs> It was so awesome. Thank you for coming. Thank you to everyone who came. Thank you for showing your support. I'm sure that you left that event with a lot more knowledge, a lot more insights into taking that next step in your business. A big thank you to all my panelists. You were wonderful. Thala, keynote speaker, along with the founder of First Check Africa. They are a VC firm. Uh, chef Obubu, who is a chef, a content creator, a content curator. She had such fantastic insights uh, for one of the businesses that we showcased during our business clinic. Ife Durosetti, she was also there, the CEO of Her Economy. Chingwe Gwim is the chief economist at uh, Coronation Merchant Bank and she was brilliant. Simbo Olatoregun was also there. Simbo is a member of the World uh, Global Shapers Forum, the Lagos community. Thank you, thank you, thank you for doing that for us and with thank you to our sponsors and partners. Nigeria jumped on board last minute because they put their money where their mouth is. Thank you for believing uh, in what we're trying to do with the Glass Ceiling Convention, Guinness, Nigeria. And thank you to the Canada High Commission, the UK High Commission. A special thank you to Jonathan Bacon from the UK High Commission who took time on his daughter's birthday to give our opening remarks. And uh, belated uh, happy birthday to your child. Ah! Oh my God! And a big thank you to the in-house team here at Nigeria Info for making it uh, making it happen. Thank you to the tech team. Tunde, you are my hero. Latif, you are my hero. You are my superheroes, and I love you. I am because we are. We're going to do it again next year. We're going to do it bigger and better. Thank you so much. And if you missed Glasscon, you can still catch YouTube channel, uh, YouTube, Facebook. It will soon be available to listen to as a podcast, and you can take all the notes you want. You can take all the uh, uh, lessons you want. You can play it back, rewind it, fast forward it. Trust me, you will not regret it. So that's the fact of the day. A third hard fact of the day. I beg to differ rinse today. Good day, honorable judges, my moderator, timekeeper, my fellow co debater. My name is Samri Takashik. I'm 13 years old. The, the auditions are over. Now, now it's, it's time, time to debate. The whole concept of democracy is coming here in you. The I Beg to Differ debate tournament returns to your radio on Monday, March 7th. I strongly concur that the barbaric and outdated 16 secondary school students made the cut. For example, if you look at Cameroon, what's happening right now is that but, but now, to stay in the game, they'll have to go head to head. The full meaning of a job means joining other businesses, but how? No second chances. Win or go home. What if AI is the end of the world? What if? What if it will cost the end of the world? Uh, uh, one winner. One million naira. Join me, Sandra Ezekwasili, my panel of judges, and my great debaters, Mondays to Thursdays, live at 4 p.m. on 99.3 Nigeria Info. And catch the replay the next day from 4 p.m. on Wazobia Max TV, showing on DSTV Go TV, Star Times, and on UHF Channel 57. This tournament is brought to you in partnership with Paystack, supported by Printivo. Thank you to Paystack. Thank you to Printivo. Printivo gave us amazing souvenirs. Paystack made sure that we could give these children money. Paystack will also be giving additional gifts to some of these children as the tournament uh, moves on along. It's finally here, Lagos. It's finally here. In less than an hour, less than an hour, the round of 16 begins. I'm sure that you are as excited as I am. I'm so excited, Jesus. We're going to have two great debates for you from four X excellent students. Two of them will move on to the, to the quarterfinals uh, next week. And thank you to you for mo uh, for tuning in to the show. I have a great show with, uh, you know, for you, as always. We'll start with the big weekend and then we'll switch to I beg to differ. Let's talk about the federal government donating $1 million for human humanitarian aid to Afghanistan. 
Then, let's talk about a Lagos wedding where petrol was shared as souvenir. The state government has shut down that event center. Let's also talk about Amechi's anger over the Kano Kaduna rail line. We'll talk about Buhari saying Oshimbajo is in charge, but not writing the Senate. And then let's talk about the foreign ministry getting Nigerians in Ukraine out of harm's way. It was a really big weekend. We can't really get into all of the stories because we still have this story here of the young woman who was found dead after uh, she sent frantic messages from a BRT right here in Lagos. Now, of course, from 4 to 5, I beg to differ the round of 16, March 1 and March 2 will take the air. And on the big hard fact, we'll talk about the pro-women constitutional amendments that the National Assembly rejected. As usual, news updates at the top of every hour. But let's get started with today's big weekend. I'm Sandra Ezekwesili, and these are your hard facts. The big, the big weekend. Does the federal government have money to spare for donations to Afghanistan? How liable should event centers be for actions of their customers? Is Amechi's anger at CCECC justified? Buhari says Oshima Joy is in charge, but did he officially tell the Senate? Can Nigeria and Ukraine get our students out of Sunny? It was a big weekend. Lagos, let's talk. Something very interesting happened this weekend. The Organization of Islamic States thanked Nigeria for donating money to Afghanistan. We saw a tweet from the OIC's official handle. It said, quote, the Secretary General of the Organization of Islamic Cooperation, Hisan Brahim Taha, has commended with appreciation the generous donation of $1 million made by the Republic of Nigeria to the Humanitarian Trust Fund for Afghanistan, end quote. One million dollars. That's more than half a billion naira. Now, you may or may not feel that that's a lot of money. But the question is, is this a lot of money for the federal government? Then there's a question of priorities. Are there other more pressing issues, more pressing use of $1 million here in Nigeria that are currently not being, because the federal government said, we don't have money, we can't afford it. For example, ASU. Lecturers have been battling the federal government over a decade. One of the beef is money. The government says it cannot afford to keep its promise to fund the rehabilitation of universities and to pay some arrears. Is a humanitarian donation to Afghanistan more important than that? Then there's infrastructure. We have the transport minister admitting that the government hasn't paid the Chinese for the Kanu Kaduna Railway. Could this half a billion have gone towards, I don't know, paying our contractors? Is a humanitarian donation to Afghanistan more important than that? Then, of course, we have our own humanitarian crisis here in Nigeria. Lots of internally displaced persons in the northeast because of Boko Haram insurgency. Lots of farmers displaced by pro militias in the north central. Lots of victim risks for the courts. Is a humanitarian donation to Afghanistan more important than that? Oh, and of course, there's the federal debt. For the last few years, debt servicing has uh, more than 85% of uh, federal revenues. We've been running debts year after year while revenue can't keep. At some point, the federal government's going to have to start repaying that debt. Yeah? Is a humanitarian donation to Afghanistan more important than that? What's your answer, Lee? 0700 993 993 993. 0700 993 993 993. Women call us on 01467190 with only 01465 Is this donation the use for the government's $1 billion right now? We've got 1595805. We're streaming live on Facebook, Nigeria Info 99.3, YouTube, Nigeria Info FM. Comrade E.K. Chuku, you have one minute. Welcome to the show. Uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. My family of dead, that is why that's a reality. And to be better, if it can be very good, a night, and you're not free to hold. You don't want to have you do it. 
Both people they suffer. I can't get half. They have but I've seen a lot of voting they can do. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. 99.3, hello. Hello, Sandra. Thanks for calling. Good afternoon. What's your name? This is me. Money. For what? When our children are here suffering. So you mean they cannot even consider those children at home thinking of how to sort out the problem and they will tell us there is no money. Why are you now doing this uh, generosity to people outside and your country is suffering? Eh? The farmers are there complaining. If they want to farm, there is no fertilizer for them to farm. And you are giving another country money for what? Let them see good uh, Nigerian police and what they are doing. People, please, please. You know, this politician not there is no money. There is money. So we and walk to them and tell them our children must go for that is what you must be them. Thank you very much for calling. It's on the line. Oh, Latin day. Uh, good afternoon, Madam Sandra. Good afternoon. You've got one. All right. About uh, Nigeria being money to have You can just see that uh, we are in this. I think yeah, I want to support a president that said the uh the cannot you have money and they are donating me to have that. Oh, All right, thank you very much for coming. Three, hello. Sorry, I give you a Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon. What's your name? My name is Chimwe. Well, welcome, Chimwe. Uh, this one that was not mm. is what when you think that it's probably a loan interest on. So it's we're not losing one million dollars. It was the interest we are going to pay on money that we did not use. Okay. In this country, the one that I say it is working. Bad federal roads, bad no one in Lagos, no fuel. Nothing that this million dollars to our society. Thank you. Thank you very much for calling, Chingwe. While you're chewing on that, let me do our second story. Weekends are for weddings. Everyone knows this. Everyone loves this in Lagos, especially. And for a lot of people, weddings are for souvenirs. Speaking of sex to differ students. But yes, uh, souvenirs at weddings, the more memorable and buzzworthy, the better. But this weekend, one wedding's souvenirs grabbed the headlines for all the wrong reasons. It was petrol. Gave away kegs of fuel as wedding service in the reception hall to be flex, you know. As, you know uh, so, as well as me, since all of us are struggling to buy good fuel right now. Well, come on, man. Oh, indoors of people. Anyway, as you can imagine, the pictures went by across the social media, but uh, the story doesn't end there. The Lagos state government took action. Better. We heard this from SSC Governor Songolu on new media. He tweeted, quote, Lagos state government, the state commission, and the for contravening public safety rules. CB orders the arrest of culprits involved, end quote. An interesting debate to be had here. Maybe it should be a debate topic for one of the kids in the future. On the one hand, you have those who are saying that the government should not hold the event center accountable because they were not the ones managing the wedding and distributing the souvenirs. On the other hand, others say that even though the clients were the ones running the wedding, the event center is still responsible for making sure all public safety laws are obeyed. They point to the example of COVID-19. Do you remember that the Lagos State government put down rules for event centers about maximum occupancy and masks and sanitizers? And who was responsible for enforcing those? The event centers. I remember an event center was even locked down uh, back in the thick of the pandemic because uh, the event center was too packed in the thick of the pandemic. So let's talk about this again. First of all, why the heck is anybody distributing kegs of petrol indoors at a wedding? That's the first question. Secondly, what do you think about the state government's response? I also want the lawyers to tell me um, how they treat the laws in this sort of uh, situation. If you're listening, hear your thoughts. And yes, you can still comment on our story. Jerry S. Dutz, Afghanistan. 0700-993-993-0700-993-993. And also share your thoughts via WhatsApp. WhatsApp is 959 If you can't reach us on WhatsApp, uh, please share your thoughts on Facebook. We've got uh, Alaba, sir. Welcome. Yes. Welcome. <laughs> oh, your, your connection is not great. Call us back if you can. Yes. Hello. Thanks for calling. What's your name? Oh, hi, Sandra. Hi. Good afternoon. My name Edna. You've got one minute. Oh, so much. In all honesty, that's not a very good gift at all. Okay. It is a gift. Oh, okay. They are putting in the gift of the guest. I think uh, it's a the owning an event center and somebody comes to my home and I ask them, what kind of souvenir are you sharing? It's going that way. Don't you? I don't even have to Good afternoon, Sandra. Good Thank you so much. We've got a minute. This is a standard. 
to whom much if you can uh, live for just stingy people. And uh, for traveling uh, with that, I need to go to Sudan. He's not. He's not. He's as a situation. I've also to that. I need to go to that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. On his one. Hello. Hello. My dear Sandra. Good to show, sir. What's your name? My name is Colin Shapsonom. Thank you, Maria. I want to elect three. Is acceptable of Nigeria. Even though this man is very weak, but I have to add to this. Other countries in Nigeria, we are just called that as this was, and we have to know that they uh, say, no, that we need everybody. So if we to have to touch it, help your human being. I'm, I'm, I'm in the present for doing this. That's what I say. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you very much for calling. While you're chewing those before a break, so let's just keep taking your calls. In three, Hello. Good afternoon. What's your name? Oh, yeah. No, go ahead. Um... On the uh, why is it at their, their house and they are chasing rats? Okay. The students been at school for how long now? And then they have enough to give out. That's good to give. Not the end of those. I more need of it. That's not a charitable at all. And on the the souvenir issue, mm. please, if they have seen event and let them on silly, it's not the fault of the owners of that event. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you very much for calling. Ninety nine point Hello. Hello. Oh. 99.3. Hello. Hello. You're my last call. Good afternoon, Sandra. Good afternoon. You've got one minute. Very quickly. I am Prince of Nigeria. Nigeria has been in three. Mm. The last one caller that, that, that call, he said, uh, give us a no lack. That's what he said. As the same thing say, don't give what you do not have. Are you hearing me? Okay. For him. He not satisfied. How can he give another person something? No, Nandi has nothing. That's and for instance, out of my village now, I have no transport to increase. And the more they have the rest, I can't show because they will pay money and to be between like a Mm -hmm. this country, this very much falling. All right. If you just tuned in, this is the Queen Hard Facts. So 99.3 Naya Info. Bring you all the big stories that broke over end every Monday at 3. I'm Zekwese. This is 99.3 Nigeria Info. progress on that railway project. CCECC had previously said that the whole thing will be done by around next February, but now Amechi is accusing them of playing politics and trying to delay the project until the next administration. The minister said, quote, I think the CCECC is beginning to play politics. They should move away from politics and focus on construction. And I think they need to complete the Kaduna Kano Rail as planned. I won't say more than this until we meet with CCECC on Wednesday, end quote. But he did say more than that. Quote, I think that what they are doing is delay the government, end quote. Uh, he said that, no, but... Um, what the confusing part is, is that she also says that the delay is that the government has not cured the money to pay CCECC.
ECC. We really want to vote. So we are funding this project from... That was why I was mentioned that if we fund them, I use that word because... However, we're putting pressure on the necessary institutions that need to give us hope before May. We should be able to get enough money to complete this. But currently, we're funding it the budget. We will approach the Minister of Finance to fund us between now and May, hoping that by May, we should be able to get the loan, end quote. The Transport Minister is acknowledging that the government has been having problems borrowing money the project or getting it released by the Finance Ministry, and this is why the project is delayed. So, what is it with the CECC? He thinks still find a way, even though the federal government has not enough money. Let me read another thing direct from him. But I know that we haven't funded them, but the ability in the fact is for them to look for CCCC giving us money, Chinese weren't giving us money, so they can't afford to be their responsibility for them. the CCEC must do. End quote. So, even though, even though. But again, it sounds like the minister is contracting himself. Or it's just me. Because first he said that the government is the one supposed to borrow project. But then he's also saying that the CCECC has a team to source for funds. This cannot be true at the same right? Those of you in construction, please let me know how it works. Seems like the minister is mixing up the contractor lenders because we're Chinese. Uh, on most of the CCECC projects, it's from one of the million Chinese infrastructure banks. It's all built and rule in a But that doesn't mean that they are the same entity. Lately, these lenders more to lend to Nigeria. We talked about Amechi again, pointing out that uh, Chinese banks were refusing to lend to Nigeria anymore, and the federal government was not using. So the deal now is based on the minister's own statements, Nigeria and services linked to federal revenue, even in need that it is safe to keep to, until more of the existing debt is paid. And this suspension of new loans is a funding for ongoing railway projects. The minister now expects the contract to use their own to do projects. With a promise from the federal government to pay them back. Same federal government that cut loans from these banks is that it cannot pay back. I hope you were able to make sense of that, yeah, because there's a lot to dig through. Yeah, as I read Amechi's words, like one million dollars to run his hand. Do you think that thing all our lives and whoopee? But that's an aside. Do you agree that it should be angry with the CCEC? Four six uh zero seven zero, sorry. Seven zero nine three nine three nine nine three. Women only on zero wave one nine zero. Share your thoughts on Nigeria Chive there. Let's speak with the uh, Auntie Sandra, this is Mr. Afra Ojolava Fafa. Sandra, mm? you can come to my wedding. Mm. You don't have to work hard because of this castle. Like, this my own show this logo, she owns this country. That's their business. That's their history. Never. Till it is, they cannot. Not money. You keep very much every. And you still have enough. To go. You still have enough to go and spend 8 million to rescue your own people from. We'll be stopping him. That is what we need us. But with not all this kind of people. Thank you very much for calling. We're here on what uh, this message is from Jason Akihabas to use it to help other countries. Part of Nigeria, it has been running deaths and worse than that, service now more than 90. Drawing, hard to pay, it's hard to pay, it's hard to pay for subsidy, but it's easy to send money to uh, Afghanistan. All wrong now. All right, Jamie Kaja, thanks for your is on the line. Hi, Sandra, how are you doing? Very well. You I want to thank you for the small child is very high because mm. it was fire from Accident. somewhere and everybody mm. in that hall. But I don't think that the uh, event center owners have done it Think forward because the event center owners don't get shared. The wedding, when you take it, you put the hall, so comes for the hall, the hall. So instead of the government would have ordinarily said, okay, we can bring 12 as souvenirs to the guys should start checking. They should put it at the junction and ask them, why do I? He doesn't answer until they come arrest you. If you see, you don't need people like that. You should be corrective. Going forward, what we do, not that you push them. After all, they are not for the well, so to speak. Well, you mean, uh, 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 Hmm. They are the ones to be held responsible for the world, not the event center owner. Thank hey, Meg, for calling. Moses on the line. Hi, Moses. Hello. Good to good have good you on the show. Good afternoon. Yes, I want to talk about uh, so Afghanistan, the money they gave to Afghanistan. Right. And we're supposed to build a church to let it know that they have a goal. Mark Sidon would bomb the situation of that. Number two, that Afghanistan, if you have been following the bomb, Afghanistan has done that aircraft, military aircraft, Lea, Number one. Number two, ammunition, heavy duty ammunition, because they have fought that war for, for, for so long. And they have done it, uh, 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 heavy duty military hardware. They are, they are treated, 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 they are tre
this 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 thing is all what Afghanistan mm. has been mm. done. Supposed to give them this money. Mm. Now, yeah. Thank you very much for calling Moses. All right, Moses. We've got uh, Abiram. No, it's Abiram. Hi. Good to have you on the show. You're live. Uh, you're talking hi. driving very well. You've got one minute. Yes. So I um, stand my. That's not our education sector. Our sector, you talked about a road. But we didn't have to give it unless mm. you wanted to be. A mm. Now, comes to a few um, centers right. where it was wrong. But it, I, I, I honestly wish that the thing will ask so probably other important, <laughs> not what the thing. So I'm just like, why don't you ask and all the mm. like, so selective in the actions? It's ridiculous. Yeah. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you, Billy. Calling. As night, government give money to citizens. Yeah, it's the height of your responsibility. This is what gives Paul Grant to nurse insinuation that there's a plan to Islamize Nigeria. It's a rewarding thing. A man or white for his home is worse than an infidel. Vote from the religious group. Uh, issue Bukata, $1 billion. What? Abba, we have genuine problems that need to be Shakuzuya with that message. Hello, good afternoon. Hello. 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 Can you hear me? Oh, yes. Okay. Hello, Sandra. Yes, hi. Hello. Okay, hello. How are you? I'm very well. My name is Don Lako. I'm calling you to comment on the issue of children. I'm really surprised I'm saying that Lagos is not about clean up. Let's flip it. What if something got mid March got in, or got in flames and also affected other buildings of innocent people? Do you call for me to be on site to see what is going on there? Okay. What they were saying for was for the foot of the car. Mm -hmm. That's what they call them to. Also, they are called people. Okay. Yeah, but if I heard that they must do the best for that thing. I ask them, do you really want to see to ask people? Because somebody had an issue. Somebody has done. Let us tell them to ask for it. They can show them the event center number one. Calling. Before leaving for the UK, the president told us the vice president is in charge, but he only took. That's our next story. There's no letter to that effect to the Senate. Remember that the VP to, uh, for the VP to take over for the, for the running of the country in the president's absence, the president must first write to the Senate or declared incompetent. But so far, there's no report of any such letter before his decree. And just have what the president told the press. He said, quote, well, I cannot claim to be doing the work alone. The government is fully represented. The vice president is there. Constitutionally, when I'm away, he's in charge. And the secretary to the state government and the chief of staff. So, no problem, end quote. <laughs> but is it really no problem? Again, without an official letter to the Senate, Vice President Oshimba Jo has no official presidential powers. That means he cannot sign executive orders. If he gives instructions to ministers or to MTA heads or any other, it is their choice whether or not to obey him. And he cannot penalize them if they choose to not obey him. If the National Assembly passes a bill, he cannot sign or veto it. More or less, the only thing that he can do by default is chair the, uh, chair the uh, NEC meeting. So is he really in charge? And if the president, based on his words, understands that the vice president should be in charge when he goes for his medicals, why not just send the handover letter to the Senate? When I'm going on leave in the office, I email the group of uh, my, my office group and I say, oh, I'm going on leave. I'm handing over to Agogo to do my show. I'm handing over to somebody else to ensure that I um, um, uh, my uh, group, manage, group brand manager role is taken care of. And the same thing for everybody else. So you know who to hold responsible if things go south. Has the president handled his out of office situation properly? And yes, you can talk about all the other stories that we have today on the big weekend. 0700-993-993-993-01465-7190. Hello, thanks for calling us. Uh, Sandra. Welcome, what's your name? My name is Andrew. Andrew, you've got one minute. So, Andrew, um, um, Sandra, I want to ask you one question. Okay. Do you think that you are going to love your father, brother, your mother? Am I going to love my father, mother, my mother? What I'm going to say is this, eh? <laughs> there is no way Buhari will love Nigeria more than a Nigerian. Buhari is not a Nigerian. All right. Is, you you can't say that on air. You have no proof of that whatsoever. Uh, and I'm not going to let you stay on air to say that. 99.3, hello. 
Hello. Good to have you on the show. What's your name? My name is Sunny. Oh, sorry about that. Call back if you can. Hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Sandra. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, Ma, what's your name? Hi, I'm calling from Matoko. Welcome. Go ahead. So, Duhari did no wrong. Because okay. many Nigerians are ignorant of the law. He is supposed to transmit to the national act, a handover to the DP if he's going to stay more than one month outside Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Anything like, less than that. He's not supposed to hand over to the GP. It is in the law. And Nigeria should know their law. Not coming on air, criticizing everything. If he's going to, when he went for blood transfusion, that said almost two months, he, he wrote to the National Assembly and handed power to the GP. But this time around, he's not staying up to one month, which the law guarantees. He is not staying up to one month. That's why he did not transfer power to VP. It is in the law. Let them go and read so, so why did he and say so so why did he say the VP is in charge? Why not just say I'm still in charge because I'm not staying one month? Yeah, so because they are questioning him. Mm -hmm. Ignorant people are questioning him. What do you want him to say? Mm -hmm. They don't know the Hello? That's so what the law say they are even the press the press that are supposed to enlighten ignorant people. So so Most of them don't know so, so if they question him he can't say the truth? That's the truth. What truth is he supposed to say? He can't if say... He law, he, why should, he, uh, if, if they know the law, why should they ask stupid questions? Because it's a stupid question. Mm. So you know that he's not staying up to one month outside. So he can't say... Guarantee. So he that can't say... Stay. He can't say the law allows me to stay in charge for one month. So he, he's going to teach you your, your job. That's what he's going to do. He's going to teach me so my he, job. He's going to teach you your job. You should know that. <laughs> and thanks for calling. 99.3, Hello. Hello, Sandra. Good How to are have you? you on the show. I'm okay. Great. Um, well, I probably just joined the show, so um, I'm just hearing bits and pieces. But I just want to contribute about the um, event center and the fuel situation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Great. Like I heard someone say something about how Lagos State really, really um, doesn't react to the right things. It's just about priorities. This government has misplaced priorities in many ways. Many, many ways. And it is sad. Nobody is talking about the fact that that was a major safety hazard mm. in the first place. We're not talking about that. Oh, why should they be spelling the. Why should, what, this, but, you know, it's, it's just sad that officials, people that are supposed to be doing what they should be doing, are not doing the right thing. And we're just going to go around and around and around. Until we stop putting young people in offices to occupied with people that have sense to you. It's just how I feel. All right. Thank you very much for calling. Have a good day. Let me go to WhatsApp. We have a lot of common, common. Our final story. Our final story will take us to Ukraine. <laughs>